Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, we're looking at Ethereum and its biggest week in history. Well, at least that's what social media continues to tell us day on day on day. I bet you thought you were going to get yourself a massive Hopium video for Ethereum. But nonetheless, we'll look at the, the facts and dive into what the facts are showing us on the charts, which is the data, not the airy-fairy titles of YouTube and Twitter. All right, guys, make sure you've hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon if you haven't already, it does go a long way, and you get to see the updates as they come out. So make sure you're staying up to date with it. And I do enjoy seeing a lot of your comments down below, the guys who are getting it, and you're understanding how the markets are flowing, and you're sort of seeing through the nonsense of buying the, the news and the rumors and everything else, and you're actually creating yourself a solid plan and making long-term gains from it. That's all I could hope for from creating the channel. All right, so let's start with the market caps, as we always do. $1.58 trillion. Bitcoin, 39,600. We just had a little bit of a fall over the last few hours as I record this, 5%. But as you can see, Ethereum only took a dive of 1%, which means it's holding up on its Bitcoin value and it's actually increasing in order to offset the losses on Bitcoin. Binance down a little less. So anything that's less than 5.2% means it's holding up on its Bitcoin value. Anything that's more than 5.2% means it's also losing Bitcoin value and fiat value. So we start to go down the, the page a little further. We can see Chainlink is down more, but it did uh, it did jump a little further over the last few days, so takes a hit a little harder. Solana, same deal. Polygon, same deal. And to ran out the top 20, Stellar and also Theta down a little further. The, the big winners here is Terra Luna. It's up against Bitcoin value and against fiat value. So that's a, good, uh, a really good sign there for Luna. Let's look at fear and greed as we always do. 48, we're at neutral. Yesterday, we were greedy and the day before that, we were greedy as well. But now we've dropped back to neutral after Bitcoin had that 5% fall. If you haven't been following or you're just new to the channel, fear and greed index plan, a really simple plan to get us into the market when the market is the most fearful. It's the scariest time. This does not mean that the market has put a bottom in, but at least it allows us to be buying Bitcoin, buying a major cryptocurrency when the market is the most fearful. As you can see here, our average buying price on Bitcoin was around $34,000 with our most recent purchase on the 21st of July at $29,793. At the current price, it puts us in a, a profitable position of 17.6%. So if you're unsure of the titles or the content that I'm producing on the channel, you may think it's bearish, especially when you see the minority think that we're talking about markets will only go down and we have to have this view of the market only going in one direction. That's not how we work. We are long-term investors, but we plan for both sides of the market just as any serious investor does. We don't become a zealot and jump on board one vision of the market and only play with that. You've got to be balanced because at the end of the day, your emotions are coming into this. So we want to be balanced on all accounts. So Long and the short of it is, we have been buying Bitcoin. The plan has been telling us to be buying Bitcoin and we just stuck to it. Average price now of $34,000 on Bitcoin, up 17%. Let's look at the cryptocurrencies. Before we get into all of the Ethereum goodness out there, uh, cryptos against their BTC value. So we've got CoinGecko, BTC, Ethereum is up against BTC over the last 24 hours and still up on the seven days. Binance, a little more, Cardano a little, so 1.8, 1.7. Obviously, the stable coins are going to be up because Bitcoin fell. Polkadot and Uniswap, as we can see, most other things are down here in the red and a couple of percent here and there. Obviously, the best performer still, Terra Luna is up against Bitcoin value. So let's look at the ETH news. We've got the Ethereum London hard fork. Does any of this matter to the price? You know, from a technical analyst point of view, not necessarily, but I'm not going to dismiss the news entirely. This is great news for Ethereum long term. In terms of a short term trade, sure, we've seen the market go up, as we'll see on the chart, about 50%. So there is something to be trading out of this. Is it going to be the point that holds the market for the long term? 
is the low end and this news is what is going to skyrocket the market. We can't say, no one can say, but we can see that the price has been affected short term by the news. So London Half Fork makes some tokens worthless. We've got a couple of gas tokens here which will become worthless. We can see it on this tweet here. Chi and gas, uh, gas token 2, that's going to be worthless because the hard fork makes, they don't need to use those tokens anymore. And we can see the prices of these have been going down, getting a little bit of a bump, but essentially long term they've been down. Gas token 2 also down, having a rise for some reason, but uh, at the end of the day, once this hard fork takes place, then these tokens are, are gone. The other point I wanted to bring up here, looking at the news, this is the way I like to use the news. You can see this is getting really bullish from a lot of reasonably reasonable sized Twitter followers here. You know, 35,000, who's this here? Anthony, he's got 100,000. EIP 1559 is not priced in. Get ready for one of the craziest weeks in, eth in history of Ethereum. Not to forget the news. Now, this isn't yesterday's news or today's news. This is a couple of weeks ago. Fidelity, Fidelity plans to roll out Ether trading for hedge funds by March 2022. So this is the building stage. This is the, the time that the businesses are building the products for hedge funds, for institutions to come and use them in the next six to 12 months. Are they going to be buying it now in preparation for that? Potentially. But it doesn't mean that this price has to go up all the way until March. It can. And I'm definitely not bearish on Ethereum long term. And you know it's one of my biggest holdings. It's one of my... Uh, it's, it's my hedge against Bitcoin in terms of a price increase. And you see that with my superannuation fund, my retirement fund for the, the guys outside of Australia. The majority of my money is in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so although there are headlines, it doesn't mean that we are going to be going up only until that period. We still have some time to settle out and sort out what's going on in these price ranges. More news. JP Morgan says Ethereum upgrades could jumpstart $40 billion staking industry. Look, this is about four weeks old. We get it. So I'm not going to go on about it too much. The report estimates that crypto staking business is worth $9 billion and could reach $40 billion by 2025 if proof of stake becomes the dominant blockchain consensus mechanism. So th there's a lot of money in proof of work, mining stuff like uh, Bitcoin. And so if proof of stake becomes the dominant blockchain consensus mechanism, then they assume there's going to be a lot of money to be made in uh, staking. So they want to be ready for that as well. Is this true? It's JP Morgan. You know, they throw a lot of things out, positive and negative, or at least it's the headlines that come through to us from what they're saying. Ether could overtake Bitcoin as a store of value, Goldman Sachs says. So this is again, earlier July, about four weeks ago. I'm just repeating a lot of the stuff that we already hear, but you'll see it again this week. So I just want to pay attention to the headlines, the stuff that people are saying, the, especially the tweets and the big crypto uh, YouTube and Twitter accounts talking about this. EIP 155 is not priced in. Get ready for the craziest weeks. This is all sort of the stuff that you need to be aware of when you see those tweets. What are they actually talking about? We've heard, we've heard about it. We've known about it. It's been factored into the calendar for a long period of time. We've seen Ethereum go from its $1,400, $1,700 level up to $4,400 level and come back down. Was it not priced in then? That's all, that's all the stuff that I take into account when I continue to see these headlines. More tweets. ETH, Ethereum whales that hold between 10,000 and 1 million ETH in their respective wallets now own a cumulative total of 60 and a half million. Talked about this on the channel before. That's over half of the available ETH out there is being held by whales. So again, you'll see the headlines around supply shocks. Get ready, supply shocks are coming. Now you got my tweet here. Bitcoin was the talk of the town yesterday. You remember that from the last week and a half, two weeks, Bitcoin up, 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 up. But then I was noticing crypto Twitter, my feed is nonstop Ethereum talk. Massive week. This is all the stuff that I continue to see on my feed. All of a sudden it changed over from Bitcoin to Ethereum again, all the titles of that, that gets me a little bit concerned about what is coming next. I can definitely get on board with the emotional ride and the roller coaster of my ETH going up. I've made 50% since the bottom. But is this a potential buy the rumor, sell the news event? I want to I wanna ask you guys, what do you think is going to happen this week after the 4th of August when the hard fork happens? Do you think ETH will maybe take off and we'll never see a $2,500 ETH again, which is the price of ETH at the time of this recording? Or do you think it's a 
by the rumor sell the news type event? Let me know in the comments down below. These details here from June Analytics just show us the amount of ETH that's locked up in ETH 2.0. So again, that adds to the supply shock, basically ETH coming off uh, the Ethereum chain going into ETH 2.0, which is bound to come out. You know, I'm very bullish on Ethereum long term. I just have a longer term perspective of how these events play out. I don't see them as short term, day to day or week to week. I think it takes months to years for the the long term gains to be had in these markets. So I'm just preparing myself for that and continuing to buy into the cryptos that I believe in long term when I see that the, the price is right on those charts. Speaking of which, here's another chart. This is Ethereum and the Google Trends search. You remember it back in May when we had the big dump and the, well, obviously, firstly, we had the big price spike and then we had the dump on Ethereum. Look at the, the Google Trends search now. There's not much happening at all. We are basically back to the low levels we saw in March when the market had a little bit of a, a correction. And it's nowhere near any of the highs that it was back in 2017 and 18 as well. So is this the point that we take off to new all-time highs? Not quite sure yet. I happen to think we're possibly in this sort of zone where we do see some potential starts, a little more of a fade away. And then when no one is thinking about it or talking about it, then we start to build. We really start to go. Um, so that's what I'm thinking is coming next. And it's really going to require a lot of patience. Now over to the charts. ETH BTC. Last week, we closed up a good week. We had an outside week, meaning there was a lower low and a higher high. And that also built on the previous week, again, which was a lower low and a higher high. That just breeds, or it just means uh, how the market is undecided. It doesn't know what it wants to do yet because we're getting this megaphone pattern play out, which I can draw in here. Up and down, megaphone. It's undecided, it's unsure of what is to come next. And so on the BTC pairing, what we want to see is a breakout at least above 7%. We've got to get above 7% and then begin to consolidate, you know, move up and then come back onto this line before we start to move again. That's what I'm looking for on ETH BTC. Nothing really has changed over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, six to 10 weeks, really. We shot up and then we're back into this zone. I wouldn't be surprised if we came back to our 50% level at 5%. But as you can see, it's not really too much to be concerned about from my point of view because between a 7 or a 5% ETH, neither here nor there, in my opinion, for my own portfolio and long-term investing. ETH USD. Now, I'm looking back on 2017. So this is where we had the big run-up and then we came down and we were beneath the old all-time high for about five to six months before we took off again. And we did have a pretty solid move through July into August and then peaked out early September, late August. So this period right here, the main, the critical thing that I'm looking for is where do we peak out and then where do we base? That is the trigger. You know, I wait on the sidelines quite a lot because I want to see some confirmation I want to see confirmation in the market. I don't need to be buying all the time because like we've talked about many times before, the market essentially moves for about 10 to 20% of the time. You just want to be in it for that move. You want to be in it before that move. But this period, that's like that's like 80% of the time. It did nothing. It went sideways. So you just want to be buying it as low as you possibly can right here and all through here. And then you just want to wait. That's it. That's literally the market tells us when and why we have to do something. The timing is right there. And so if I move forward to 2021, it's potentially doing something similar. Maybe we do skyrocket. Maybe we get past our 50% zone, which is at the 3000 level, get to our highs, get rejected. Right from this point on our dollar value, we need to see it cross the 2900 and then our 50% level, which is 3000. So from where we currently are at $2,500, we are about 20% away from our 50% level. That is the level that will let me know, are we going to get rejected? Are we going to cross above it? And then come back to retest it to give us some more stability and upside in the market. Ideally, that's what I want to see for a bullish market. But for now, we're still sort of playing, we're playing underneath the 50% level, just mucking around in these levels to test. Well, the whales are testing us. Is there any more sell? Are there any more sellers in the market? Are there any more buyers? And where are the buyers stepping in? Currently, that price is at around $1,800. So 
Sellers at the moment are sitting around 2,600 as we've just seen over the last 24 hours. So all of this good news has brought about an ETH price of 2550 so far. We've got a couple of days left until the hard fork comes through. Does that mean we're going to never see a $2,500 ETH again? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. From my experience, there has been a ton of news and a ton of hype. We've only managed this sort of a move so far. The move is, call it 50%, a nice rounded number to the upside. You know ETH, you know crypto does more than 50% when there is this much news. That's what has me questioning it a little bit. If you're not questioning it and you think I am full of it and this is going to go to the moon from this point, let me hear from you guys in the comments down below and why. No one's right, no one's wrong. Market is going to tell us what happens at the end of this. Thanks very much for your time. Make sure you've liked the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, you want to stay up to date with the news and the technical analysis. Check us out on Twitter and on Instagram. The special on the Investor Accelerator is still running. It's a new month, so make sure you jump on board early in the month so you get all the reports coming through and you get all of the previous exclusive posts and reports from the previous month as well. So jump on board now if you haven't already. The discount is still going. All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.